What I'm presenting are interim results from an ongoing phase one, two safety and anti-tumor activity study of nivolumab, an anti-PD-1 antibody in patients with advanced hepatocellular carcinoma, which is the word we use for liver cancer. This is a worldwide problem with approximately 780,000 people being diagnosed with liver cancer annually. Advanced liver cancer, also known as hepatocellular carcinoma, is the second most frequent cause of cancer-related death worldwide. For patients with advanced disease, which is the ma majority of the patients that we see, sorafenib is the only FDA-approved systemic treatment with an average survival of less than 11 months. After failure of sorafenib, there is no current standard of care. Nivolumab is an anti-PD-1 checkpoint inhibitor that stimulates the patient's own immune system to fight the cancer. Again, this ongoing study is investigating the use of nivolumab in patients with advanced liver cancer. The patients were treated into three different cohorts. One cohort of patients had hepatitis B, one had hepatitis C, and the third cohort of patients were non infected with any virus, meaning not hepatitis B and not hepatitis C. The reason they were treated in separate cohorts is to ensure that nivolumab was safe in all these groups of patients. So the dose was escalated separately in each group. Important to note that 75% of the patients treated in this study had previously received a systemic treatment for liver cancer. More specifically, 68% of them had received the standard of care sorafenib. Pa patients received, again, escalating doses up to 10 milligrams per kilograms every two weeks. The main goal of the study, the main objective was to establish the safety and tolerability, and the secondary goal was to look at the anti-tumor activity in the form of response rate. These are the safety results. We see that 68% of patients had some side effect or toxicity from the treatment. However, the majority of these side effects were mild in nature. Only 19% of patients had what we call grade three or four toxicity or adverse events. More specifically, only one patient had a grade four toxicity of increase in lipase in pancreatic enzyme that had no symptoms with it. All the rest uh, of, of the, of the grade, four, grade three, four toxicities were actually grade three. If you look at overall, most of the toxicities were related to abnormalities in lab results, increase in liver enzymes, AST and ALT, increase in lipase and amylase, and rash and itching. These are the percentages that this occurred in. The elevations of these uh, liver enzymes, as well as the lipase and amylase, again, were not accompanied by any symptoms. We used what we refer to as the RESIST criteria to evaluate response. So a patient who has a response has had 30% or more shrinkage of the average tumor size. Based on this, 19% of the patients had a response, tumor shrinkage. To put, this, to put this in context for you, the response rate with the standard of care currently, which is sorafenib, is 2%, 2 to 3%. Two patients actually had a complete response, which means complete disappearance of all tumor. And this has lasted beyond one year. And this is the breaking down of the patients who had uh, a complete versus partial response. Again, the total is 8 out of 42, which is 19%. Six out of the eight responses are ongoing, which highlights an important aspect here of the durability of the responses. Actually, seven out of the eight have gone beyond nine months at this point. The responses were observed across all the cohorts of patients, patients with hepatitis B, C, or those who were uninfected with any virus. Another important point is that 62% of the patients on the study were still surviving at 12 months from the time that we initiated the treatment. Again, to put it in context, in the setting of patients who have already been treated with sorafenib, it's about 30% who are usually alive at 12 months. In, in summary, 
Nivolumab, the anti-PD-1 antibody, has a manageable safety profile in patients with advanced liver cancer, including those who are infected with hepatitis B or C. This is the first study to show the anti-tumor activity of this PD-1 immune checkpoint inhibitor in patients with liver cancer. The activity is manifested in the form of durable responses across all the treatment groups. The 12 months survival rate of 62% is encouraging. These are preliminary results in a small group of patients, and there is an ongoing expansion part of the study to validate these findings. Thank you.